Why do businesses fail? There's only one reason. Only one reason why your business will fail. But let me tell you what the reasons aren't. It's not your business partner. It's not your product or your service. It's not your staff. It's not your spouse. It's not your competition or your price point. It's not even the government or the interest rates. In fact, you know, we'll probably hear moving forward from here, oh, it's Brexit, it's Donald Trump, it's, you know, in other words, it's always something outside of you you can't control. But you know, let's look at different examples of companies that have grown through adversity. Big companies like Google that started just after the dot-com crash, or Facebook that grew through the global recession. No, the only reason businesses will fail is because of you, the business owner. My name is Peter Sage and I've spent the last three decades nearly as a very active entrepreneur with many global success stories and many global failures. And I've come to terms with being able to own all of that. And I'm here to say that if you can't own your successes and your failures, then you can't move forward. You still with me? Great. Because in this video, what I really want to do is offer you some advice on how to select the best business coaching for yourself. I and mean, what do you want to look for in the minefield of business coaches? You know, let's get some real value here. The first thing you want to be looking for is understanding the difference between advice and opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. What's the difference? Well, advice is information given firsthand from somebody that's been there and done what it is that you're looking to emulate. And I see so many business coaches that have never actually ran a business. I mean, would you trust a skinny chef? No. Would you hire an overweight personal trainer? No, of course not. So why would you take business advice from somebody that's never ran a successful business? In fact, more to the point, I'd go so far as to say, yeah, have they ever had any business failures as well and learned from them and been successful after that? Because your failures can be your biggest capital. They're where most of the learning can come from. So if you're looking to take advice from somebody, know that it's not opinion. And then talk to someone that's actually been there and done it, that's ran a successful business, maybe had some rocky ground and, and come back from that. See, all the years in the businesses that I've ran, I've really focused on three cornerstones that make up great business advice. Now, the first one is fundamental to business owners, and that is the tactics that are required to operate a business. Every great business coach understands tactics, and that's, to be fair, what most of them teach. In fact, 95% of business coaches only focus on tactics. What do I mean by that? Well, it's your sales, your marketing, your time management, your planning and policies and procedures. You know, it's all of the fundamental aspects that you need in order to be able to operate a business. Being able to manage cash flow and being able to you know, organize your HR and being able to apply marketing to the marketplace. All of this is tactics and you've got to learn it. That's your tradecraft as a business owner. But if you're only applying tactics, you can have the best tactics in the world, but if you don't have a plan for how to strategically execute them, you're going to fall down. Now, you've got no direction, which is where the second pillar really comes in. And the second key critical pillar of understanding business advice is understanding strategy. See, you can be a good tactician, but unless you're a strategist, then you're going to get lost with your competition. So what is business strategy? What is great business strategy? It's asking better questions. You know, why are you in business in the first place? What are you here for? What are your pain points that you're solving for your customers? Why are you the people to solve it? Now, what does the business stand for in terms of the overarching objectives that guide the business when it gets stormy? So that you're not just moving pieces around on a chessboard, but you understand a lot of the thinking that's required on how to win the long-term game of business. And that's where strategy really steps up. Now, now, with strategy, there's a challenge. It takes a deeper level of thinking. And most business owners are too reactive to the marketplace. They're too busy being busy to really focus on strategy, which is why they struggle so much. And there's also very few business coaches that really understand it at a deep level. You know, I've been very fortunate enough to work with you know, some of the greatest business coaches in the world. For example, the late, great Chet Holmes was an incredible strategist. Or people like Jay Abraham, who's a business genius and really understands the role that strategy plays over and above tactics. Now, I've been a business partner with Jay. You know, understanding that as a business owner, if your strategy doesn't lead your tactics, you're going to get left behind. So while strategy and tactics are fundamentals of business success, there is a third and critical component that almost no business coaches talk about. And that's because they're just not qualified. And that's the psychology and the mindset of a business owner. And very few psychologists are good business coaches and very few coaches and business coaches are psychologists. But if we go back to sports, what you'll find is that all great sporting coaches understand that physical components are just the price of admission. You know, when it comes to game day, 80% is mindset. And have a think. 
You know, you've got Lionel Messi, one of the greatest footballers in the world. The difference between Lionel Messi on a great day where he can't put a foot wrong and he's scoring goals and his, his feet are just like poetry versus a day where he's just not up to speed. It's got nothing to do with how many new skills he learned that week. No, it's whether or not he's on game, whether his mindset is there or not. Now, as a business owner, you can learn all the strategy and tactics in the world, but it's who's applying the strategy and tactics that is the most important part, and that's you. So unless you understand how to manage you on the inside, it doesn't really matter what's going on, on the outside. After all, outer world follows inner world, not the other way around. So how do you really address mindset? Well, there's so many different layers we can go into here that you know, many people just aren't aware of. Most of the behaviors of business owners are unconscious. So how can you possibly understand what they are unless you have somebody to be able to point out your blind spots? Now, if you'd like to learn more about tactics, strategy, and mindset, I've prepared a short 10 question business assessment that you can use to see where you stand on these skills. I've also recorded a video on each of these topics, mindset, strategy, and tactics, where I really drill down, not only offer some valuable content for you that can make a difference to your business now, but they also outline the framework for how I teach and synergize this at my three-day business school. If you'd like to get access to that, simply click the link below, and it'd be a real privilege for me to help take your business to the next level and help you become the entrepreneur you were born to be. Um, I came across Peter Sage online on Facebook, um, got a chance to sign up for his free assessment. The questions the man asks really goes deep into mindset, strategy and tactics. And that's followed up with these free videos that it's, it's, it's so important we forget about how important mindset is in business. Um, so if you get a chance um, to watch these free videos or sign up for the free assessment, I highly, highly recommend it because it will definitely change your life. So the reason we want to bring this up in the meeting today is because of the strategic objectives that we've put in place. And that, excuse me, did you know that procrastination is one of the number one killers of success? What are you waiting for? Go click the button. So if we can schedule about 30 minutes for that, uh, that you're still here, you, you're waiting for me? Um, oh, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Go and click the button. There we go. All right, so back to the real.